We have one brand new show to talk about this week, and that is AMC's Into the Badlands. So full spoilers for Season 1, Episode 1, entitled The Fort. A mighty warrior and a young boy search for enlightenment in a ruthless territory controlled by feudal barons. I feel like that's a description of probably the show as a whole rather than this episode. Well, sure, but we are we're in the we're in the first episode, so yeah. But I feel like they haven't got to that part yet. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the show. So, do you want to do you want to come back next week and we can discuss episode? Too? Uh, no, I'd rather not. No, I'd See rather. how it evolves as time goes <laughs> no, on? No, no, I'd rather not. To become not. this show you really want to know the very fine details about? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so joining us, uh, Ethan Boyd also watched this pilot. Um, yeah, I did. Uh, but uh, what did you think? Um, like, it was exactly what I was expecting it to be. Uh, not a lot of story substance necessarily, but like, all the fighting looked amazing because the choreography was just like really on point yeah i mean i guess uh i guess we should start with the positives the the choreography was nice for the most part uh connor would you agree with that definitely apart from uh, there was a couple of like the close-up shots which were just a bit shaky that kind of seemed to be like they, like they were trying to hide some less well-constructed points of the fights yeah there was a couple of weird uh like Especially cuts. in the first fight, it was. Yeah. There was a couple of yeah. cuts. Like, it'd kick up, and it'd cut into a shot, like a mid shot of him just standing there, and it would just, it, like, the continuity between the shots just felt a bit off. Yeah, but for the most part, they were they were pretty great. Yeah, I, it, it was. It was obvious this. That's why the show got picked up in the first place. Yeah. Well, I mean, the one in the rain, like, kind of impressed me because I just. Yeah. It, it didn't. I mean, I don't think it was like the best, like, sort of martial arts fight I'd ever seen on screen, but. It did occur to me like halfway through it. You know what? I don't think I've ever seen something like this on TV. I expect this from a movie, not um, The only a TV thing show. I can think of even close is uh, Netflix's Marco Polo has some stuff that is, you know, tops this. But that's TV, but sort of kind of verging on not because of the way Netflix does their stuff. Yeah, I guess so. But AMC is also, you know... It, you know, you got stuff like Walking Dead, which pushes makeup effects on TV. You got stuff like, uh, yeah, you know, Mad Men, which pushed like costumes and stuff. Every AMC show has like some kind of higher budget quality to them, and this one is definitely everything went toward the choreography of the fight scenes because, yeah, pretty much everything else in the show, <clears throat> uh, I don't know, it was just it was just like predictable, like. It's what you expect, though, from this kind of show. Like, really badass dude is, like, super badass, and then he finds this kid that happens to be, like, essentially a chosen one of sorts that can do all kinds of crazy, stupid shit. And then, like, there is more beyond the Badlands. Like, who the fuck didn't see that coming? Like, it's, it's very, like, basic. But like easy to follow, so like AMC is going to have viewership. Do you know I have no problem with the concept. Like, see, in like science fiction, this basic concept actually appeals to me. You've got a cl closed off society, and then like the the their wee dream of something beyond the wall. You know, like something out there that's better. You know that that mm. core concept is fine with me. Um, I think that show has a lot of problems though. It's not told very well, and I think part of the problem is I don't really completely understand the setting like all throughout the episode I'm like what exactly I mean it, it, there's, a, there's a voiceover at the start that sets it up but I still don't entirely It's that's that's the biggest problem but I'm hoping it's pilotitis because there's a lot of exposition trying to explain this setting but it just doesn't quite let it feel natural so yeah. I'm hoping may, maybe if it goes on and you just kind of accept the world and like learn more about it through context rather than them just trying to force feed you the information mm. it might be better it's just yeah because so i guess it's supposed to be like kung fu mad max yeah like yeah this is um okay. it's a like post-apocalyptic like society and there are other barons i'm guessing in small forts as well yeah they said there was something like seven five i think it was five, five other than like the baron five other okay yeah, yeah. So six 
Cause, yeah, man, I don't know. Uh, they kept talking about stuff, and I kept not caring. Nobody uh, the really felt... They really pull you in. No, the they, sure. they did not feel human at all. They just felt like, I am a robot that does kung fu, and then I can say lines at you. The only and one who didn't just... feel like a robot was the Baron, but in the, in the worst way possible, because he was so over the top and like putting on this thick accent that was like comical. Yeah, none of that worked. Um, I can't really nail what he's trying to do with his character. Oh, every southern accent build up just and one just like. Well, I get, I got that. Like, <laughs> just compressed. That, but like, just his like mannerisms and everything, like, I don't know. He's it's a immense. crazy reverend in the post-apocalyptic universe, and you're but, gonna listen to me because Jesus do. doesn't exist, but I do. <laughs> like. Whatever. Some of the way he acted was like masculine, and some other times when he would talk, it felt very immasculine. Like it was just odd. Like, yeah, I don't know. It's a shame actually where... that Mario's not here because I think he would probably agree that the setup for this is oddly kind of similar to a comic book right now called Lazarus, which is a very good comic book, may I add, a uh, fantastic series. But just yeah. in the in the sense that there's like clans almost with leaders. And they have like chosen warriors who'll do all the badass fighting for them, like that. So that that's more what you'd expect a post-apocalyptic society to be, and not just you know fields and you know otherwise. Quite that's nice. it. I, I really like that. Op- you know the opening shot where it's like the poppy fields and kind of comes up. I thought it looked really good. Like just uh, the actual, just the the composition of the shot was yeah. quite nice. Yeah, their composition's good, but AMC's good about that. Like all their shows look and feel very cinematic. Like. It looks like you're watching a movie, even though you're watching a TV show. But this one's just pretty, like. Yeah, it doesn't. Um, and and the and the sound, the the score is almost non-existent for a lot of it. Uh, yeah. I remember during I, that I first liked fight, that a lot of point. you saw who I, did the. I opening really liked song, it in right? that opening fight scene, though, because you had nothing until, and then it had that moment where he first kind of he's just dodging the stuff at first. And then you don't have any music at all until he looks around and actually like commits to the fight, and that's the first hint of anything. I think that really works well. I like the opening yeah. uh, credit music though. That was Mike Shinoda. <laughs> For real? Was yeah. That's, that's yes. good. I, I really like the, yeah, the the style of the credits. Actually, like that that opening. Yeah. Well, the credits uh, were the right best after part. Open says it. All right, yeah, so go. the best part of the show was uh, one fifth of Lincoln Park. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's that's <laughs> our review of the band. <laughs> Honestly, I'm curious oh, if he had like if he played a part in the rest of the score. I don't uh, know. It's like a lot of the songs sounded like Mike Shinoda. Like, yeah, because I know he did. Um, he did the score for yeah. the American release of the Raid, where it was Raid Redemption. Yeah, he did the score for that, and that was pretty good. Um, but back onto this, uh, I guess we should go around. Connor, are you going to check out episode two? Yes, but only give it, I'll give it one more chance in case it is just a case of pilot eyes. Okay. All right. Ethan, how about you? Oh uh, yeah. Well, yes. Yes. All right. Uh, Peter. Uh, I'll definitely watch it. Peter, um, are you going to watch episode two? If everyone else says, I suppose I'm going to. <laughs> wow. This is not how I thought this was going to end up. <laughs> um, I I ended that going wow uh, I'm I don't, I don't, I don't really want to though I mean I mean I I mean I might if if other people like are, with but, this one yeah. I am gonna watch episode two American Horror Story I only watched episode one and I knew what to expect from the rest of it because yeah. I've seen it before seen four four but times like, before <laughs> exactly but this is a new show so it's like like I want to give it a chance because like Agents of Shield wasn't the most solid show. Yeah, and that and that had a lot to deal with, you know, the universe being bigger than the pilot. So it could be a case the same same thing here where it's just not explaining it well. You need to just right. settle it. it, had, it, it but honestly, it wasn't just that show, though. No, it like, wasn't just if that. I didn't have a two hour premiere like every other fucking show this season on AMC. That's true. I don't know. I um I may reluctantly watch episode two, but I mean, if both of you guys are doing it, then maybe, uh, maybe we will have a discussion of episode two in some way, shape, or form next week on Almost Cancelled. But, uh, well, yeah, I guess that does it for uh, our review of the pilot for Into the Badlands. Yeah.